see. Uh, I'll have, um, oh, a turkey sandwich. White meat only on white bread and uh, sliced bread down the middle. You know, thinner. And Russian dressing, of course. Harry, we got a fancy customer out here. You take care of her. I want to finish these glasses. Look, miss, we got ham, liverwurst, and cheese. And the bread, it comes already sliced. All right, a ham on white toast. You'll cut the fat off, of course. Of course. My husband, they, uh, they didn't teach him how to make sandwiches in college. Oh, a backward school. Very sad. Look, maybe you better go someplace else. A nice fancy place. To go with your fancy clothes. Why? I like it here. It's so tubby. I do like music, though. Have you got a jukebox? This is a drugstore, miss. No entertainment. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> like I said, maybe you better go someplace else. A place with a band. A floor show, maybe. A girl as fancy as you, she should have a floor show. <laughs> You're a funny woman. Did you know that? I didn't know that. You better go. As a matter of fact, there was someplace I was supposed to be tonight. Well, it doesn't make any difference. Pierre, my sandwich. Ham on white toast. Mm, merci beaucoup. Mmm, say, Pierre. The name is Sawyer. Mm. Sawyer, will you give me some change, please? I've got to make a telephone call. This is a 10. Do you figure to call Africa? You know, I did once. I had a real nice chat with a friend of mine named Freddie. Freddie Bancroft, you know, the band leader. Oh, yeah, Freddie. Do you have something smaller? Well, how about a quarter? Nice new one, hmm? I think I can handle this water. Hello, Martha. This is Miss Morrison. I know I should be at home. Who's there, Martha? Oh, well, we'll, we'll put Miss Ramsey on, huh? Grace? Grace, how dizzy can I get? I mean, even I never before invited ten people to my house for dinner and, and forgot all about it. Where am I? In the drugstore, darling. You know, the last of the apothecaries or something. You really, you should see it, Grace. In fact, you will see it. You tell everyone to come down here at once, because I'm going to give a drugstore dinner party. Ham, cheese, liverwurst, just take your choice. Oh, darling. Okay. Harry? Harry! Just passing this store, Mr. Uh... Hans? Yes, sir. Almost seemed like fate. Usually we go down for... Uh, we were going to see our son, Eugene Kraut, Jr. He's a graduate accountant. Gene, <laughs> he'll never know what happened to us. He'll never figure on all this excitement. Yeah, sure, sure, but just what did you see? Well, we seen this fellow. Right away, I knew he was no good. Didn't I, Sylvia? Oh, Mr. Kranz, he's very good with people. <laughs> Never got stuck on credit once in our hardware uh, store. Now, uh, this man just... Don't what did rush, he do? Mr. Kranz, Paul. He'll tell it in his own way. Now, go on, Mr. Kranz. Well, this fella, he jumps into a car and drives away. Bet he did 60. The car? A Chevy, 1940. Had one once myself. Ah, uh, I can give you a real good clue. Uh, the right rear fender... It had a bump in it, a <laughs> dent. <laughs> this man, what did he look like? Oh, it was uh, pretty late, Paul. They probably couldn't see much. Oh, sure we did. We looked real careful. Uh, the man, well, he was average looking, and his hair, it seemed kind of dark. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, this oh, is a Mrs. Sawyer, <laughs> maybe you can describe this man. Oh, please, don't ask me again. Don't ask me to talk. He killed Mary. Jack Dollar, he killed Harry. He killed Harry. <laughs> What's your name, Miss? Helen Morrison. You uh, usually dress like this to run out to a drugstore? I don't usually run out to a drugstore. 
You don't live in this neighborhood. That's right. I don't live in this neighborhood. All right, skip the wisecracks. What were you doing here? Having dinner. A ham sandwich? I'm on a diet. Let's book her, Paul. Maybe she wants a ride in a prowl car. Well, now, I've been in a prowl car. Some of my best friends used to be cops. What were you doing here? I was driving around killing time, amusing myself, watching the other half living. Why? Because sometimes I like to be by myself. Besides, my psychiatrist says it's good for my personality to meet all sorts of people. What do you do with your personality? The things in skirts that call themselves ladies. Ellen Morrison? Seems I know that name. Well, it seems I get around. <laughs> oh, here, here, now. Drink some water. Oh, honey, you yeah, just yeah, cry. Yeah. It'll do you good. Oh, sure. Ellen Morrison, name in the papers. That Ellen Morrison? Oh, do you read the tabloids, Sergeant? <laughs> you know, I had you figured for a New York Times type. No, I read the tabloids. You and that Brazilian diplomat. Diplomat? Oh. You know, I think currently you're a... Uh, Involved with the actor, Tom Evers, huh? How is that going to come out? Uh, well, no. I'll save you four cents. That romance is over. Thanks. You think you can identify this man? Certainly. He was tall, dark, not very attractive. Not your type, huh? <laughs> You're no. my type, Philo. She can identify him. So I can identify him. What are you going to do about it? Something that's right up your alley. We start combing the city, looking for a man. Oh, well, that being the case, We'll probably be running into each other again. Honey, honey, I, I seen your picture in the paper. I thought it was a real good one. Say, if you want an extra copy, our boy Eugene Jr., he bought about 20 papers. You know, they took our picture, too. That's what Eugene was looking for. But our picture, they didn't run it. Eugene was disappointed. I don't think we can wait any longer. Sergeant Cochran is out looking for Miss Morrison now. We'll have to get along without her. Anyway, the most important people are here. Now, Sergeant Cochran and I have checked our files. We have several men, all with records, all fitting the same general description. One of them, we think, is our man. God. Oh, honey, this might be hard on you. You want me to sit next to him. All right, bring them all on. Which one, Mrs. Sawyer? The one on the end, him. You, Joe Polika, step forward. Hey, look, look, what is this? I was Shut walking up. down... Take another look, Mrs. Sawyer. I don't need another look. That's the one. Sure, that's him, the killer. The killer. The killer, the crazy. Him, the killer. Easy, Sawyer. Sure, let me go. Take it easy. Killer. Handle it. We'll killer. 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 Take it easy. Killer. Sorry, I, I can't say for sure. Oh, well, no, look, Miss Morrison, <clears throat> you weren't at the lineup for the Crances, and Mrs. Sawyer positively identified Polika. Oh, now, my dear angry Sergeant Cox. You took me into a room and showed me this Polika boy, didn't you? Yeah. And I looked at him with my nice brown eyes, didn't I? You blowed your nice black Irish blouse, didn't you? Sorry, I can't positively identify him. Uh, the night it happened, you were feeling pretty gay. Do. I mean, at the drugstore, maybe you just didn't look too closely, huh? Oh, now, I always look closely at men, as you seem to have heard. How about the girls, Cochran? Do you look them over closely? Sure. Now, look, Miss Morrison, this business of a, a hood killing a little druggist, you know, this isn't like table hopping or playing hide and seek with some Broadway columnist. A man is a killer. He's got to be handled. I know you like to laugh and all that, but this is not a funny situation. <laughs> some of the characters are pretty funny. Now, look. Would the publicity you might get for refusing to identify this man be worth having a killer on the loose? I don't think I'd like that story very much. Well, you haven't been so particular in the past. Well, thanks for following my career. Not yours, you're a type. The police blotter is full of them. Young women, too much money, too little to do. They like to play games. Oh, oh, I'm hurt. Here I thought you'd found me. Sergeant, well, tell me about my type. Little rich girl, it varies. Yeah, sometimes... Sometimes they end up murdered in some off-limits joy, or, or get mixed up in other people's divorces. <laughs> or sometimes they try suicide after leaving lots of little notes around and calling the papers. A headache any way you look oh, at why? it. Why? Why? Because they think they run the world, that's why. 
just got a report on that guy in the drugstore killing Joe Felica. Yeah. Anyway, the night of the murder, he was driving a black Chevy sedan, 1940 model. And it had a dent in the right rear fender. Now, would you care to identify him? Tell me, Sergeant Cochran, what are your statistics about the dents of in fenders of 1940 Chevy? Oh. Huh? All right, bring in Felica. Okay, over there. Yes. D down there, you said it wasn't me. Thanks. And the mothers, they're wrong. And I tell them. Oh, tell them. They they'll believe you. Well, I did. You did? Well, it's not that they can do anything to me. <laughs> you're innocent. You're innocent. It's, uh, it's the trouble, you know. Who wants all this trouble? You see what I mean? Can I go now? Certainly, Miss Morrison. We won't need her. This one's easy. Oh, Sergeant, about that publicity, don't worry. Just remember your police blotter. The life story of Ellen, Ellen Morrison on a bridge. It's a time okay. I right. lose on my job. That's all right, that's sit, down, sit down, sit down. Felica, five years ago, you had a grand larceny conviction. I was a jerk kid. With some other guys, I stole a car. I got my parole. Mr. Williams down at the parole board, he says he's proud of me. Well, that was uh, five years ago. Ever do any work? Are you kidding? Sure. No, I work all the time. I'm steady. I'm a cutter, Jay Stroud. The night the druggist was killed, Saturday night. What were you doing? Oh, what do you think I was doing on Saturday night? I was out riding with my girl, Angela. Car. 40 Chevy? Yeah, is that a crime? Go on. Uh, Angela and me, we, we had a fright. Uh, her old man don't like me. Says I don't have enough money to marry his daughter. <laughs> uh, Angela, see, she doesn't want to marry unless it's in the church and, uh, with her family bawling, kissing everybody else, and uh, oh, a religious girl. If a guy loves her, he can go crazy. Huh? Well, we had a fight. You had a fight. Go on. Uh, uh, look, do you need all this? Can I go back to my job? Polika, you're not going back to your job. Go on. Sure, uh, Angela, uh, she jumped out of a out of the car at a red light, and then I just drove around for a while. And then I parked, and I uh, started walking. I don't remember where I was, I was just, just walking. Oh, any place in particular? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, there was this penny arcade. It's like it always used to be, you know, you put in a penny and you pull a lever and zing, everything lights up, you're a great guy. <laughs> I mean, no problem. Time of the murder, 10-10. What were you doing? Okay, I, will. I was right there, downstairs. Yeah, they got a television screen. It's, uh, uh, it's 16 inches. I was watching a fight between 10 and 11. Uh, lots of people there. Lots of people. Talk to anybody in particular? Uh, one old guy. Yeah, he had a, a white mustache. Uh, nice old guy. Oh, he'd remember me. He said, uh, said it was his hobby. <laughs> he would never forget me. Uh, and his address? No. His name? Old man with white mustache, no name, no address. It won't fly, Felica. What? You're it. No! Now, Felica, you're not the type that would make any trouble. No, no, I don't want any trouble. That's I a don't smart trouble. boy. But I was watching this television screen. It was, it was between. You'll have your chance to talk to the jury, you know. Just well, tell your story. I'm sure we had a fight, and I can't All right, that. Charlie, take him over to the DA. An old man with a white mustache. No name, no address. Huh. That kid's been reading books. Yeah. Hey, Mac. Huh? Do you, uh, do you think that Polika might be telling the truth? Look, Paul, I've been doing this a long time. 
I've got a rule. When a case is cold, it's cold. This one fits. We did our job. The DA has it now. If Polika is innocent, let his lawyer get him free. Oh, well, you know what kind of lawyer the kid is going to get? One of those boys from out in the corridor appointed by the court. All right, boy. Can you buy him a lawyer? No, I... I guess not. Druggist Slayer gets chair. Twelve good men and true agree that there is evidence beyond reasonable doubt. When did he get it? Six weeks. An old guy with a mustache. <laughs> what jury believe a story like that? The poor sloth. Hey, here's your girlfriend up the road, tricks. The champagne and caviar set have moved to Third Avenue. And leading them is a dizzy darling of cafe society, Miss Ellen Morrison. Now, isn't that touching? Yeah. And you were burned up because this dizzy dame couldn't positively identify Polika. Well, she looks like she's having fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not bad, is it? Tommy, where are you? Sit down a second. Just getting another shuffleboard lesson from Mr. Callahan. Well, you come on and concede. I'm lonesome. That's it. That's all you had to say. Say, what did I say? That you were lonesome. I wish you'd get lonesome for me more often. Oh, now, Thomas, that's against the rules, the Third Avenue rules. OK. Here's your money, lady. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, uh, what do you do? <clears throat> you want to stay here? Sure, isn't it fun? Well, yeah, but I thought we might try the place across the street. Tommy, you're bored. Well, of course, I've been bored for years. Haven't you, Ellen? You just named me anything better. <laughs> okay. Come on, Tommy, give me a nickel for the jukebox, will you? Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, and goodbye. No, no offense. I, I'm just being sociable. Don't I know you from somewhere? Now, look, Bob. Okay, okay. No offense. I'm not looking for any trouble. Give me another. This time you better serve it up the end of the bar. People aren't fraternizing with the natives tonight. What's wrong? Shut up. what I do? That man down there, do you see him? Yeah. Tommy, look, don't let him out of your sight, will you? This is very important. Do you understand? What do you mean understand? You're he going crazy? Keep quiet and do as I say. Now, I've got to make a telephone call. Will you watch him? Sure. <laughs> Good old Tommy. I'll watch you. Mick Reynolds, say, can you talk any louder? Some dame, I can't hear her. Hello, who is this? Oh, Miss Morrison. Well, we were just talking about you. Where are you? Third Avenue, huh? Having fun? You saw who? The murderer. I saw the real murderer. Uh-huh. You're having a little party, huh? Maybe you're feeling pretty good, huh? Uh, all right, all right. You stay there. We'll be over there in a little while. Well, where is he? My rival? Dead. Oh, now, Tommy, don't be silly. I told you to watch him. Well, I did. I watched him walk right out that door while you were phoning. Out the door? Oh, now, wait a minute. He's not your type. Here's your nickel for the jukebox. Now, come on. Oh, that was important. Well, so am I. Now, wait a minute. What's all this about? The party's over, Tommy. What does that mean? It means so long. So long? I'll see you around. Miss Morrison, I don't like to be dragged out of my home in the middle of the night for some irresponsible whim. I'm not used to it. This is a serious matter. A man has been arrested, tried, convicted, and sentenced. And you expect me to believe a story such as this? Miss Morrison, the district attorney's office is interested in justice. 
But in order to administer justice, we must have facts. The facts are plain, Mr. Lukash. I saw the man. If you'll pardon me, Miss Morrison, you think you saw him. I'll pardon you, but I saw him. <laughs> a dark bar, a party mood, a man with some superficial resemblance. <laughs> no, these mistakes in identification often happen, Miss Morrison. People mean to help us. They just get excited, that's all. Now, Miss Morrison, will you answer me one question? Why this sudden concern about Palika? The last time I talked to you, I wasn't particularly impressed by your interest. Sergeant Cotton, that man was standing closer to me than you are. He didn't seem to care about what he had done. He didn't even seem to remember it or remember me. But if he ever does remember and find well, me... Well, if you're worried about your safety, why, we'll have... Well, why don't we leave it at that? Well, I've got to hand it to you. You're consistent inside and out. It's very simple. We'll put a detail on that bar. Watch it very closely. If any suspect shows up, we'll get in touch with you. No, that's not enough. This boy, Joe Palika, is going to die in a month. Now, now he's the wrong man. What are you going to do about now, it? Now, Miss Morrison, you're making some extreme statements. You don't want to put yourself in a ridiculous position. I've been doing that for years, Mr. Lugash. The newspapers make fun of me, gentlemen, but they always print what I have to say. Miss Morrison, this is nothing for the newspapers. <laughs> After all, if there is another man, well, we don't want to tip him off, now, do we? You're so right, Mr. Lugash. We must do this quietly. Go on. Now, you may think we're conservative, Miss Morrison, but well, we've got to be sure. Now, the first thing you've got to do is see Joe Palika again. Now, you saw this other man again tonight. Look at Palika and be sure, very sure. I'll have McReynolds take you up to Sing Sing in the morning. I'll make the necessary arrangements. I'd like Cochran to go, too. Certainly. <laughs> We'll pick you up at 11, if that's not too early. I'll be ready by 9. Now, that's the way to do things. Everybody working together. <laughs> Nobody going off half cocked. <laughs> now, you better go home and get some sleep, Morris. Tomorrow is very important to us. And to Joe Palika. I don't like this, boys. We're not wild about it ourselves. Gave us a case, three witnesses, all fingering Palika. It was a nice conviction. It's in the annual report already. I told you about the Morrison girl. You told me. So what? An unbelievable witness that even that jerk lawyer for the defense wouldn't use. All right, so what do we do now? It's a hot question to ask me, Cochran. It's your case. Work it out. Yeah, work it out. But don't you get your boys into trouble. I didn't say that. Naturally, we all want to do the right thing. Yeah, naturally, yeah. Now, now fellas, there's yeah. no need of us to quarrel among them ourselves. You know that Mr. Lugash wants to do the right thing. Of course. I'm going home. Let me know how you come out after you take her up to Sing Sing tomorrow. Now, Paul, you know what to do. Yeah. Miss Morrison is outside at the people. Yeah. You keep Polika talking. But the main thing is, don't get his hopes up or anything like that. Okay. This is just one of those things. <laughs> All right, Mac, I know what to do. Sure, sure you do, Paul. Well, might as well bring Polika in. All right, Polika. See me. Hi, fella. Remember me? I'm Cochran. Oh, yeah. Well, it's nice to see you. How you been? <laughs> Fine. Sit down, Joe. Right. You got some news for me, huh? Oh, no, 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 Joe. This is just, just a, a routine checkup. We do this all the time. Oh, sure. Well, it's uh, nice to see you. Yeah. Uh, okay. How have they been treating you, Joe? Oh, okay. All of them, right? Treat me good. Mr. Cochran, huh? the fellas, uh, they say I need an appeal. I haven't seen my lawyer since before the trial. I, I know he's busy. But Joe, now look, see, uh, you have to have uh, evidence, see, new, new evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, you still on the case, Mr. Cochran? <laughs> I guess so. You, you remember my girl, Angela? Oh, sure. Yeah, well, she wrote me a letter. Oh? Yeah. And uh, she's going to get engaged. She's going to marry a wholesale grocer. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. I... Oh, 
no, that's okay. That's okay, Angela. She's a good girl. She, she always does right. Smoke. Oh no, yeah, that's a funny thing. I never did pick up the habit. Thanks. Well, I guess that's all for today, Joe. I <clears throat> just wanted to see how you were getting along, you know. The guys, they all kid me about it. <laughs> no. No, what does that mean? If you got something to say, say it. I mean that Joe Polika isn't the one who shot the druggist. The man I saw last night, he's the one. Why couldn't you give us a definite no before this? The newspapers will really ride you now. Even so, it wasn't Joe Palika. <sighs> Mr. McReynolds, may I see Mr. Cochran alone? Certainly. Pal, McReynolds, I certainly don't trust him. Why not? I don't know, but I just don't. Now look, right now it's more a question of Mac trusting you and making sure you're not off on another one of your larks. And how about you? Ditto. Listen, Cochran, I want to ask you something. What's it like here for Joe Polika now, waiting to die? It's not like the movies. It's, it's clean and it's quiet here. These men, they wake up every morning and they, they brush their teeth. They follow the ball games. They don't think they're going to die. Even the ones who haven't got a chance, those rotten little cop killers, they go right on acting as if they'll be out soon. Yeah, and they write letters. Dear Mary, I'll see you in July and we'll go out to... Jones's beach and on a hot day. Oh, Mary, you've always been a good kid. Always gave me the best. Hello and goodbye. That's what they, that's what they write about. And near the end? Near the end, it's fear. All of a sudden, it just, just sinks in. They're nice. They're so nice to everyone. They crawl at the end. The guard who brings them the food and the the barber who shaves their heads. They think if they're nice to somebody, why somebody's gonna keep them alive. You know, they say it's easier to walk a man to the chair than it is to take him into night court. The boys say they, they just kind of float right along with you and, and, and smile and call you mister. More, there must be more. More what? More that you can do. <clears throat> like finding a man you may never have seen. Finding the old man on the white beard would be easier than that. Miss Morrison, I imagine this has been a strain on you. You better go down to the end of the hall. There's an office there. You can rest a minute. We have a few matters to talk over. Look, it wasn't Joe Just Polika. go ahead, please. I need a shave. Mac, what are we going to do, huh? Her word. Her saying she saw a guy it won't mean a thing. I mean... Officially. All right, all right. Unofficially, what are we going to do? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. This dizzy dame all of a sudden pulling the big reform act. You want us to look like idiots in the department because suddenly she claims she sees things? But Polika! Guilty! Now look, Paul. Polika is guilty. You want to make a big mess. You want a hundred guys in the department mad at you for nothing. Yeah. Mac, I'm going ahead with this. Then you'll go alone. Yeah, sure. See, if I've been alone on this for some time now. I'm sorry, Paul. Yes, so am I. Well, we might as well get back to the city. Sure. Why not? Oh, hi. Hi. I'm sorry I'm a little late. There was a little uh, trouble uptown. Oh, that's all right. Hey, you shouldn't be in here alone. How about that friend of yours? Tommy? Yeah. Never showed up? I guess Tommy just doesn't think I'm much fun anymore. Oh, isn't that sad? Oh, I'm not complaining. Complain? Who cares? Look, Cochran, 
I know you're sitting in this bar here with me on your own time. I know that you haven't had much sleep in three days. And I know that you're not even sure that there is another man, but as long as we're here, we might as well be sociable. All right, so I'm sociable. What's new in Charlie Knickerbocker today, huh? Who's the queen of the ball? All right, forget it, Cochran. Let's just stick to business. Well, your friend Palika is getting fatter and is getting closer to the chair. I haven't had a chance to see the Krantz. Mrs. Sawyer's out of town. She'll be expected back tomorrow, I hear. Maybe I can soften up one of them, but I doubt it. Cochran, do people ever soften up on other people? Look, if you mean me, I only soften up when there's a reason. You know, I wonder which way you'd hate me more. If we find the man, or if we don't. No, I can't get the prescription over there any sooner. Look, the man who filled them for me, he's sick. Yes, I've been away. Well, I don't care if you go to the drugstore down the street. You, you think this has been easy for me? Do you want to trade places? Hello, Mrs. Sawyer. Remember me? Is that a day to forget? <clears throat> I, uh, I'll have a cup of black coffee, please. Forget it. You want a sweet roll? Uh, no, thanks. I saw Joe Palika the other day. Him? He's still alive? Yeah, for three more weeks. I didn't ever want to hear his name again. Yeah, I know how, I know how you feel, but things were pretty hectic that day. Hectic? It's a great word to describe your husband murdered. Well, you see, we just have to make sure of things. Look, I, I've had a lot of aggravation today. Just what are you trying to say? Well, I was wondering, are you positive Palika was the man who shot your husband? What is this? Are you crazy? You're trying to make me crazy. It could have been a mistake. I've seen it happen before. You wouldn't want the wrong man to die. Get out of here. Arrest me. Kill me like Harry was killed. I'm sorry. It's very important, Mrs. But Mrs. his face, those little eyes. Do you want me to remember every second again? You get fun out of this. I... Get out. I didn't mean to upset you. I... It's my job. I wish you were doing your job the night that Palika was walking the streets. Maybe Harry would be alive now. Hi, Ellen. Oh, hi. Still want to be alone? <laughs> yes, Tommy, but sit down if you want to. Thanks. Iron work. Well, I guess they'll be up at the Cape by now. Who? Dick and Maxine. It'll be a wonderful weekend. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, Ellen. Snap out of it. Third Avenue used to be fun, but nobody comes here anymore. Now, look, Tommy, I didn't ask you to come here, did I? If you want to stay, all right, but I I'm busy, so please don't make me talk. Hello, Miss Morrison. Still looking for Mr. X? Just like this place. Tommy and I, we come here often. Sure. Say, uh, do you play shuffleboard? Sorry, I don't. Uh, expecting anyone else? No one. Isn't Tommy and I enough? Sure is. Seen Cochran? Oh, once in a while. He's a fine young man. He could have a big future. Speaking of young men with futures, our Mr. Palika's down to two weeks. Twelve days, to be exact. Oh, I didn't know you kept track. I keep track of a lot of things, Miss Morrison. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse us, Tommy and I were sort of having a tape tape. Well, excuse yeah. me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. I hope you'll get in some shuffleboard. Sure. Who's your friend? No friend. Cop. You in trouble? Nothing you could do anything about, Tommy. You want me to go? Oh, I really don't care. Hi. Oh, hello. Uh, Mr. Elliot, Sergeant Cochran. Sergeant? Yes, another policeman, Tommy. I think you'd better go. I'll see you around, Mr. Elliot. I doubt it. Bye, Ellen. Bye. You know, I, I've known him for years, and that's the first time I ever knew he could be hurt. <laughs> All of us can. Things I learned. Yeah, me too. Well, McReynolds was here. Yeah, I know. I just saw him leave. What does he mean, Paul? I'm not sure. He's, he's very peculiar lately. We hardly speak at the office. We used to be a team, and now we split up on assignments. I don't know what Mac is up to. You really like him, don't you? 
Yeah, a lot. I guess maybe that's what's so sad. I, I guess I believed in him. Maybe even looked up to him. I understand, Paul. Do you? I don't. Oh. Come on, it's magazine time again. Yeah. Now, I just say, I've read this one four times, so I guess it's my choice. Oh, sorry, it's mine. I've only read it three. <laughs> well, I guess I'm stuck with uh, McClellan's Seed Catalog again. <laughs> Hey, did you ever plant uh, giant gladiolas? Oh, always. I always planted them right next to the um, hollyhocks to keep them from feeling so superior. <laughs> what about the zinnias? Yep. Violets? Oh, no. Forget-me-nots? Yes. And your next question is, what is it you're trying to forget, Ellen? How'd you guess? During our nightly sessions, I've watched you slowly trying to salvage name in the paper Morrison. I admire your effort. I even applaud it. But that's not exactly our purpose here, is and it? And you have always evaded. Oh, not always. <laughs> no? Hmm. All right, then what are you trying to forget? <laughs> oh, you should have been a cop. A uh, lawyer, not a cop. <laughs> then you should have been... Yes. Skip it. Once upon a while ago, there was a girl, Paul. A young girl. A pretty girl, her mother said. And she fell in love. Oh, she was well loved in return. Not only by the boy, but by um, just a share of people. Her life rolled out before her just, just like a clear morning. Then one morning, the boy went sailing. It was a morning like any other morning. But by evening, all those nice things had gone with, with a boat that never came back. Is that what you want to hear, Paul? You're lying. All right. There is no one thing or, or one incident that makes a person's life what they are. So why don't you ask me outright why I spend my life in nightclubs and my days sleeping? Why? Well, because you wouldn't know how to answer it. Oh, mm. so the good detective takes the classic approach and, and collects little things and hopes to make a full picture. But he tries. And he evades the issue. No. Paul, I'm not sitting here with you or without you out of boredom. I, I'm just trying to make a nightmare end. Now look, Ellen, look, will you say to yourself and believe it? that that man is not going to walk through this door and the nightmare is not going to end. You're doing exactly what you told me not to do. You're basing Palika's life on one small incident. Ellen, look, he won't come. He must come, No, Paul. Ellen, no. But then you've got to go to the Crances and I... break their story. Pa Paul, you've forgotten about I... Joe Palika. He has two weeks while you sit here and you waste your time with me. All right, I'll go. Look, I'll go for every single one of the 12 remaining days, if it'll do any good at all. Paul, it was such a short morning. Look, a morning is just one half of the day, see. Now, Mr. Krantz, you're sure about Palika? Absolutely. Mrs. Krantz? Just as sure as Eugene is that Palika was the one, all right. You know, just before a man is going to be executed, all of a sudden, a lot of people get interested in him. Start raking over dead coals. As long as you were here, I just thought I'd go over the story with you. Well, you can count on us. <laughs> Nobody can convince me it wasn't Pelika. You've been fine witnesses, both of you. You'd be surprised the number of fellas come into my store now who never did before. <laughs> I guess it's because they, they figure a man who can be a, a witness in a murder trial, he knows how to handle himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You fellas certainly worked late on this detective business. It, it must be 11 o'clock. Mm, this is kind of special. Oh, there you are, Sergeant Cochran. We've been waiting for you a and Mr. McReynolds came in. <laughs> a real reunion, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. I thought you were off for 48 hours. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. I just dropped by and found our friends, the Francis, waiting for you. Oh, and we <laughs> thought everyone had forgotten all about oh, us. Oh, oh, no, not Mr. McReynolds here. He's the sentimental type. You uh, been talking about anything special? Mm. Just reviewing the case, as you fellas say. The Crances seem to have pretty strong memories. Yeah, well, I was hoping I'd get a chance to find that out for myself. Oh, I just thought I'd help you out, kid. Oh, uh, Paul, when you try any tricks, remember who taught them to you. Fine gentlemen. 
You bet. Oh, would you folks mind uh, just stepping inside here? Thank you. Sit there right now. Oh, Sergeant, you gentlemen work so hard. You look tired. No, I'm okay. Oh, uh, we have a son. Yes, I know, Eugene Jr. Oh, that's right. He works hard, too, and we keep telling him, don't work so hard. Somebody ought to tell you that, Sergeant. You look bad. You ought to get more reps. Sure. Oh, <laughs> just like Eugene Jr. That's what he says, sure. And he doesn't mean it either. Now, what was it you wanted to see us about? Well, I saw uh, McReynolds seems to have gone over it all already. You wanted to review the case? Well, I just wanted to make sure there were no doubts. Oh, none whatever. We told Sergeant McReynolds that, didn't we? Yes, and he was so pleased about our memories. He's such a nice gentleman. Yep, he sure is. Now, you, you are very observant, Mrs. Kranz. He is a gentleman. Oh, yes. And such taste, the way he dresses. Did, did you notice that tie? Oh, yes, <clears throat> indeed. I never could tie a bow tie myself, you know. I can never wear one either. Well, oh, but that one cost eight bucks. Hey. Well, it's real silk, you know. I knew it was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't think a cop could wear polka dots either, could you? White polka dots on blue. Personally, I like them. Uh, I thought it looked quite masculine. Oh, well, sure, of course. Well, I just want to thank you folks for coming in. Well, it was a pleasure to see you again, a to pleasure. talk to you. <laughs> and goodbye, Mrs. Collins. Now, you keep on noticing things, huh? can be a big help. Oh, I do, I do. Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. Hello there. You here every night? Is there a law against it? Alone? Doesn't it look like it? Expecting anyone? I don't know. Do you have to ask questions? No, just curious. How does it happen you're here so often, Mr. McReynolds? Oh, I get around. Oh. Oh, oh. hello, Mac. Just passing. Oh, I'll see you around, huh? Listen, did, did you see the Crances? Yeah, I saw them, but Mac got there first. What does that mean? I'm not sure. When I walked in, he seemed to be briefing them on their story, and they were being so positive about Palika, and he was complimenting them on their memories. Oh. I couldn't break them down. I then. didn't try to break them down, Ellen. I tried something else. Ellen, I know we're right now. They were so positive they couldn't be shaken. So then I started to talk to them about the tie that Mac was wearing, and they agreed with me that it was a, a bow tie, blue with white polka dots. Well, you just saw it now. I didn't notice it. It's a plain brown four in hand, of course. These crances, you can tell them anything if you're positive enough. Mrs. Sawyer was positive it was Palika, so they agree with her. But, but you can't build a case on a mythical bow tie, Ellen. You can't. Oh, well, I'll, I'll go out and get us some, uh, some magazines, huh? All right. Wait here. Yeah. Watch your step, buddy. Sorry. Take a shot, Dan. your boyfriend tonight. The unsocial one, I mean. Oh, he'll be dropping around any minute, I hope. You know, I'll swear we met somewhere before. I know you, but I can't think of it. Do you know me? No. No, oh, no, I don't know you. It's just one of those things, I guess. I guess you could call it that. Yeah. Now I know. Now I remember where it was. Oh, now, 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 don't you go doing anything you'll be sorry for. It was Corky Snyder's wedding. You were one of the bridesmaids. Oh, no, I I'm sorry. It must have been someone else who looked like me. It's positive. Well, nice seeing you again. We'll probably run into each other sometime. You never can tell. Yeah. Well, I gotta be running along. The little woman hates for me to be late. So long. So long. Come on. 
come on. Baby, I brought donuts. Got coffee? That's the man. Coffee and donuts, are you sure? Yes, that's... He doesn't look any more like Palika than I do. Paul, I never said he did. It was the others who said it was Palika. But that was what we wanted. He, he would look enough like Palika so that we could have Paul, a Paul, will you cut it out? All right, I'll go yeah. myself. You go around the corner. I don't want him to see you. Oh, sorry. Thought it was the paper boy. Police. Sorry you caught me eating. What's wrong? My car parked on the wrong side of the street? No, no, no. Just uh, there's some burglaries around the neighborhood. We uh, just checking up. Good idea. Who wants some coffee? Uh, no, thanks. You live alone here? Uh, no, me and the wife. Uh, uh, she's sleeping. You always keep your doors good and locked? Sure. The wife, she's the nervous type. Oh, well, it's good to be careful. Yeah. <gasps> you. <gasps> All right, Mrs. Sawyer, no more phony hysterics. Yes. He had it all worked out. I was afraid. Yeah. He made me do it. Yeah, it almost worked, too. <laughs> you and your boyfriend had it all figured out, didn't you, huh? He shot your husband and he grabbed a ten spot out of the cash register just to make it look good, huh? And all you had to do was to go along with the crosses on their big description and pick some poor sap like Palika out of the lineup, huh? I never wanted Only to. Only you never counted on Ellen Morrison and her ham sandwich, huh? Otherwise, such a neat idea. Neat enough to fool a young <laughs> punk. An old cop like me, I should have guessed. How did, how, did, how did you... I've been following you for a couple of days. There are ways of doing things. <laughs> I'm glad I haven't forgotten them. Yeah, so am I. I would like to be with you when you go up to talk to Kalika. Sure, Mac. I'll take care of these two. Oh, uh, you have a friend waiting for you in the hall. Huh? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'll get the wagon. Hey. Oh, what is this now? Cheers? Huh? Paul. All right, Sergeant Cockton, let's not have any conquering hero routine. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, uh, Miss Morrison. Oh, Paul, I... Well, it, it's just that I want a little time to investigate this character named Ellen Morrison and, and see if I can't make a person out of it. All right, okay, but just don't take too long because, well, I might have to come looking for you. That's what I'm hoping for, Paul. More than anything else in this world. Hoping for that. 